One of the best hi-fi amplifiers of the year. Find out after a message from our sponsor, MPB. The power to tell a story is in us all. The power to change the way we feel, our understanding, change the rules, how we see ourselves, provoke, change history. Together, let's change the bigger picture. Change access. Put camera gear in more hands and keep the story going. Buy, sell, and trade used camera gear. MPB. Thanks to MPB for sponsoring the podcast. And joining me is Hi-Fi editor, Ed Selly. And Ed, let's take a look at Hi-Fi amplifiers. What were our choices for this year? Well, we had lots of choices, bluntly speaking. Uh, we looked at quite a few amplifiers as a very conscious choice this year. Uh, this is because I remember when I was putting it together in 23, I didn't think I'd looked at enough amplifiers. So I've done my best to <laughs> redress that. Um, with that, uh, we tried to get a good spread in. Uh, so uh, there's there's a variety of, of choices. And that when it came to choosing the award winners, um, there were plenty of candidates. Uh, in the end, split four ways. Um, it's always a point of contention just how many points you want to split, but we think this is the sensible way. Um, our best affordable amplifier was a complete surprise. Um, Advanced Paris i75. Um I had a sneaking suspicion this would be pretty good because people whose opinions I respected said, this is worth looking at. Um, I genuinely wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. What's um, really interesting is, um, I don't want to take this for granted, but you can almost say that everything that we look at, generally speaking, sounds pretty good in 2024. It's pretty rare to find something that doesn't. Um, and needless to say, the i75 sounds extremely good. Uh, what really marks it out is that it's absolutely festooned with functionality uh, lots and lots of analog inputs phono stage but then lots and lots of digital inputs uh, including a usb input uh, an optional bluetooth module so you can use this amplifier as you see fit um, and it's that flexibility combined with uh, how it sounds and how it looks i mean the looks are slightly more of a matter of taste but it's well built and i don't think it's going to offend anybody so that's why um, we went with that as our opening an affordable amp fire winner and it sets a pattern for what comes next uh across the other other amplifiers um because then we hand over to the cambridge audio phase because they bagged two awards um the cxa 81 um is the next rung up cx81 mark ii i should say because it replaces the original cxa81 and then um i had to make sure that i was at pains to explain this in the actual awards copy which as phil says you can read on the website the exa100 then wins the award level above that i believe that's uh aspirational amplifier so we had mid price and aspirational um, and they look extremely similar and they do extremely similar things like the advanced paris they blend a really nice selection of analog connections with a really effective and well-specified digital board. In the case of the CXA, that means optical, coaxial and USB connections. In the case of the EXA, that's um, augmented by a HDMI, oh goodness me, an HDMI ARC connection. I should say an eARC connection, one of the first ones of them that I've tested. And um, once again, what marks these amplifiers out is they sound brilliant. That's a given, but they sound brilliant no matter how you choose to use them and how you choose to assemble a system around them. It's this flexibility. It's this attention to detail. It's this asking almost nothing of you on a day-to-day -day level while still delivering a performance which has you grinning like an idiot that really sets them apart. It's something that Cambridge Audio has been working on for years and it, the recipe has really come of age in this last calendar year. We then complete the process with the Cyrus 40 amp, which uh, news, uh, uh, newsman Ian pointed out makes it sound like a very big fuse, but it's not a very big fuse. It's a very, very good amplifier. It's new casework from Cyrus, um, and it looks different to any Cyrus product we've seen before, and it's got features like HDMI arc, as we saw on the EXA100. Um, and all of these things mean that it's extremely modern and extremely impressive. But most importantly, it still sounds like a Cyrus amplifier, which means that it's a genuine riot to listen to. What Cyrus did that warranted the award was take everything that they're so good at 
and then move it forward and make it more relevant for 2024. I mean, it, you could have made an argument that the magnificent Luxman L509Z would have been in with a shout for this award as well. What swung it in favour of the Cyrus was that it's this modernity combined with their classic attributes that made for an amplifier, which is just genuinely impressive to use and listen with. Those were our choices. Um, you can, of course, vigorously disagree with them in the comments section, but those are the ones that we felt warranted the awards this time out. And Ed, let's look at some of the features um, that's available on these amplifiers, because this is why, um, you know, it's a subject we we keep coming back to, but it's, it's why some people are downgrading um, mm. from five channels to two channels. Because eARC is now available on yeah. the majority of of these products, um, it, an interesting one as well in terms of how companies are doing this in terms of uh, power amps or integrated amps and streamers. So the Cambridge Audio as well, um, bit of a double act there with the the streamer and the amplifier because they kind of overlap in terms of functionality. Yes, they do. And on paper, it looks preposterous. Why would you go for both? There are arguments for going for both. The streamer is still better sounding than the amplifier is on its own. But what Cambridge Audio is is more conscious of is that the streamer can be adapted, as you say, to run with active speakers, to run in with a power amplifier, and essentially live a life completely on its own. Whereas the amplifier will go on and essentially can also be used in an entirely self-contained way, but also as the fun the the the, um, the basis for a, a larger system. The but this this addition of HDMI arc um, on three of the four award winning amplifiers it's a big deal and in the case of both sorry two of the four the more affordable Cambridge doesn't have one which is why the EXA is 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 still the one to go for in the case of both the EXA and the Cyrus if you listen to um, you know, the digital inputs, turn the amplifier off. If you then turn the television on, it doesn't matter what the amplifier was doing beforehand, it will flick on, sync up with the television, and away it goes. It asks nothing of you. And it means that people in the house who are perhaps less committed to learning the remote functions of 20 different products, they don't have to care about these things. It just works. It does mean that functionality that you and your family may have got completely used to with AV receivers is now being replicated on two channel. And that just means that for people who are going, do you know what? I don't want all of these speakers in my room anymore. Um, we've Two channel has learned enough tricks and enough sort of behavioral traits to mean that it's not going to feel like stepping back in time when you move to two channel. All of these products are thoroughly modern and it really did shape our eventual award winners over and above more conventional, more classically specified products, which, you know, still have tremendous appeal. And it might be something that I'd go for as a, as a lunatic. But in terms of this all round appeal, these award winners reflect this ability to be used how you want, not how the manufacturer thinks you should use them. Yeah.